Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're gonna be looking at Arteezy's Muerto. What's interesting is that I was looking at his Dota Pro Tracker. His win rate isn't that good. It's 48.2%, which is fine, it's whatever. And then his Muerto win rate is just 72.7 out of 11 matches. This guy is dominating on this hero. They were first picking it in the recent Dream League. And so I wanna see what's up. They did recently buff this hero incredibly hard. The Q does 25 more damage at level one, a very significant increase, especially for securing the range creep. The W costs less mana, and if an enemy hero dies inside of it, it gains an additional revenant and its duration is refreshed. That is obviously a huge change, especially for team fights. It's E. The target bonus search range was increased by 25, so the E is better. And finally, the ulti just gives more damage in the yearly levels, especially at level six, your ulti gives you 20 extra bonus damage. So this hero just got buffed and buffed and buffed. And so yeah, let's see what RTC does to make it. All right, before we get into the main part of the video, I do want to let you guys know that I'm not only posting videos here on YouTube, I also frequently post videos on the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, almost every single day, I'm posting a new video to the Game League website. We're going to teach you guys in depth about how to get to the next level. So if you want to become absolutely broken and really take your game to the next level, I'm going to be able to help you because sometimes the guides on YouTube, there's either not enough of them, they're not specific, or they're just tier lists, which I know you guys love, but at the end of the day, the Game League website is going to help you get to the next level. So click the link down below and sign up. At level one, Morta isn't the best hero, has pretty bad or mediocre base stats. It has three armor, not the best movement speed and not the best damage. But at the end of the day, it's a ranged hero with a pretty good nuke and so it's okay. You're gonna see in the early levels, you just wanna use your Q to secure the range creep and do harass damage at the same exact time. From there, what Arteezy tries to do as much as humanly possible is auto attack the enemy from out of creep range, right? So you'll notice anytime the Legion goes for a CS, if she's out of attack range of the creeps, Arteezy will often go for a hit. Now in this case, he goes for even more than one hit and and that's just because the Fatal Bonds plus the Deadshot did so much damage, so he was in a state of advantage. Now as the lane progresses, what Arteezy does is he gets extremely aggressive. I think what he thinks about this hero is that if people ever try to truly aggress on him, he will basically always be able to use the W, the calling, to get a 30% movement speed slow for seven seconds and kite them out, right? So basically what he's doing is he's chipping on this Legion constantly. Like he's been hitting her off cooldown, especially at level three here because the Shadow Demon's very under leveled and he's a level up on the Legion. He feels comfortable getting aggressive. And you notice he doesn't even back off when the Shadow Demon comes in, right? He actually actively takes a trade with a full HP hero. And once again, I think that's because he has two level advantage. So he just sees it as a generally favorable trade. But at the same time, it's also partially because he thinks that at some point, if the enemy gets low, right, if they get low or if they try to go on him, the W will just turn around the fight. Also, that was a sick Q using it on the Legion and hitting the Shadow Demon to get double the damage. Now on Arteezy's boots timing, he's an absolute nuisance. And I want to show you guys how he actually does this so you can do it as well. It's not necessarily that complicated. It's just mostly about issuing your attack command from outside of the creep attack range. So basically, you're going to notice that every time he tries to hit the Legion, he wants to start it from out of creep attack range, right? So you'll see he right clicks on the Legion and this wasn't in the range of these three creeps. And so that one auto attack that he drew on the Legion and then potentially the next one doesn't draw creep aggro. Notice how when he hit the Legion there, it didn't draw aggro, right? That's pretty crazy. And this is one of the highest skill things that people do in Dota at the current date and time, which is auto attack from out of range. And then for three seconds, you can't draw aggro again. Aggro is tied to your hero. It's a three second cooldown tied to your hero. And so this next auto attack, Right, because the aggro is on cooldown on his hero for those three seconds, this next one just doesn't draw any aggro at all. He also de-aggros at the same time. This means that that first melee creep also did not chase him, so he gets a range creep deny, couple of auto attacks, and he continues to do this, right? He does tank aggro here and there, don't get me wrong, it's not like he never tanks aggro. He just thinks that this legion can't really trade with him, and especially on the boots timing, he can just get this guy low and continue to kite him. And now, as we talked about earlier on your level 6 timing, you want to sit on agility treads typically and just lay into the enemy. We'll see a great rap from the warlock here, and what you should always be asking every Every time you're playing Muerta when you hit level 6 is bring a stun guys. Come here with a stun, come here with a slow, we will get a kill. Because that is how good this hero is. He right, he drops the W, he tries to use the Q to push the guy back. Unfortunately, I, I don't know, he was either slow or out of range. I don't know exactly what it was, but he doesn't get the Q. Typically, you want to bounce the enemy back into your calling with the dead shot, and that's going to set up for real value from the ult. But even there, just the upheaval plus the ulti, you could see the damage from the treads plus the javelin. It's just absurd, and they even try to chase down the shadow demon as well. This was this was nuts and honestly stupid. If there was any TP, <laughs> he could die. Maybe he knew they didn't have TPs. I don't know. From there, what Arteezy does next is he actually ends up taking triangle on his maelstrom timing. 
I wouldn't actually recommend trying to take it at any other time, and he even uses his W frequently on the Ancient Camps to slow them down, kite them out, and avoid taking as much damage, right? The only problem with taking Ancients on Wartime is your hero's actually not that good at it. It's not that it's slow, it's actually quite fast because your E procs an insane amount. Notice how he has three points in the Q, one in the W, and four in the E. And with the double proc, you're procking your rails from like crazy, right, with the double shot. And it's going to allow you to farm up the Ancients reasonably quickly. As we're watching this on two times speed, you can still see it's very, very fast. However, you're going to be extremely low. And if the enemy is in a state of advantage, right, if they're winning the game and you do this, you're very likely to get smoke anked and your hero typically can't defend itself too well. Even though three of your abilities sort of are defensive, it often is hard to live in the early game, especially to a lot of mobile mid heroes. But it doesn't truly matter, at least in this game, because he's fine and so he's going to pick up the 14 minute wisdom rune and continue to tank ancients. And I like this because if the top wave ever shoves in, you get to farm that extremely conveniently. He sees the fight happening on the bot side of the map right now, right? So he knows he's safe. Once again, where is somewhat easy to gank, so you don't really want to push out and show in lanes unless you see the enemy, right? You should see Morta more as a drow ranger and less as something like a jug. And also a big reason why the Ancients are important is just because of the fact that, well, Ancients give a lot of XP, and Morta benefits extremely heavily from levels, because number one, her spells are just very, very good, especially her ulti scales incredibly well, and then her talents are great as well. At level 10, you get 8 strength, some people take deadshot damage to clear waves and take stacks, at level 15, you get 35 damage, at 20, honestly, this one sort of depends, but typically for core, you take Gunslinger Chance, right? The Gunslinger Chance just makes it a 70% chance to double shot, which is crazy, and at level 20, 25, this one once again depends, but magic resist, honestly magic resist just tends to be a little bit better so you don't get bursted in the team fights. And honestly for the first 20 minutes in the game guys, Artesia just farms, like this guy, he just hits creeps, I'm not kidding. The only movement he's made out of the triangle was kind of a rotation to the boss side of the map. He ended up helping out with a Marcy kill because she kind of just stumbled into his grasp as well as two other teammates, but for the most part, He's been kind of just chilling. He's only going to show up to fights under his tower. He sort of did that earlier as well. But then other than that, he was just playing for this Shadowblade time. It's kind of crazy that he goes Shadowblade. I guess BKB doesn't really save him against something like Liege Commander. I say that, but it does prevent Blade Mail from reflecting damage. So this build, guys, is very straightforward. If you get gone on, you lose the fight. If you don't, you win the fight, all right? So you have to make sure you're getting gone on last. In a game like this against Sven, Legion Ember, he has to be pretty damn careful in getting something like Aegis' best case scenario. Because you have three strictly damage items, well, I guess Dragonlance is sort of a balance, you take Roche and other kills extremely fast, and the Aegis here is really huge on it once again, a glass cannon like Morta. And even from there, he's gonna take a real chance. I mean, this is pretty crazy for him to just run into them, considering he doesn't have Pike, he doesn't have B. KB, it's none of these sort of defensive items. He even misses his- oh god, that was bad. <laughs> he misses his ulti there, which is pretty damn unfortunate, but if anyone even gets slightly in range, they will just instantly die. Unfortunately, heroes like Sven that are BKB don't really care about you whatsoever, but when their BKBs end, they get evaporated. And also, if you can get the Grove Bow, this is the best neutral item by far. Honestly, it's better than most tier 3 neutral items as well, because attack range on a glass cannon is insane, attack speed is insane on this hero, and then reducing magic resist on the people you hit with your ulti, which causes your auto attacks to do magic damage, right? <laughs> it's just too damn good, right? So even going into tier three and tier four neutral items, like I'm pretty sure in a lot of games, I would take Grove Bow over something like Mindbreaker, which might sound insane, but you already have a silence and a disable. It's often better just to have good positioning and even more right click damage. But we'll see in this fight here, look at this this Ember Spirit. The guy thinks he's safe, but he forgets he's against the Muerta. And yeah, with a couple of auto attacks and a Panga Roll, the guy just dies. And that's not even including Muerta ult. He just right clicked him to death because he didn't have mana for the ulti. Now in this upcoming team fight here, I thought his execution was quite brilliant. I thought he was very, very patient on using his spells, particularly his BKB and his ulti. So you notice as this fight breaks out, he has to be very careful of Legion. I mean, Legion unironically solo kills him and Sven can as well. And, and so he has to be super careful. He drops his W onto the Muerta, silencing her up, right? She tries to get in and does get silenced and that kind of helps him in the, in the beginning here. Using the Grobo plus the Dragonlance, he has absurd attack range and finishes off the Marcy. From there, he's gonna push forward and all he really has to do is react with his ult onto physical attackers, right? So the Legion's getting controlled. This is huge for him because if Legion isn't controlled, well, he can't feel safe at all. He gets pulled up by the Sven and that forces him to kind of drop his BKB and his ulti at the same time. Technically, he only needed one, but he pressed both. In this case, you can see the damage even through Sven BKB. I mean, BKB doesn't even really save you against Muerto nowadays, especially with this hyper damage build. Do keep in mind, he did go back for BKB, so don't be too psychotic, you have to buy it eventually. But yeah, shreds the Sven, forces the guy out of the fight. 
From there, the Ember Spirit tries to go in, but a couple of auto attacks scare him off, and he's gonna kite the outside of the fight. Notice how he doesn't just run in a straight line towards the enemy. You know what happens when you do that on Muerta? Especially with no BKB, you freaking die. You get dueled, you get pounced on, you get chained, whatever it is, you die. And so you need to have some patience. He even drops his W on top of himself here because he was afraid the Sven was going to jump on top of him. So he doesn't get jumped on by the Sven. Good lift from the Brewmaster to keep that guy up in the air. And then with his disables, he's eventually able to finish off the Ember. He hits a really good dead shot on Ember here. A couple of auto attacks onto the tree line, pushes him back towards the Brewmaster. And I mean, that's not even a long disable, but the guy just straight up dies. For his final items, he completed a Lincolns because he's against Legion. You can go Pike against heroes like Clockwork or just something like a Slark, whatever, you know, sort of melee range hero that does get kited by a four staff, it's good to buy the Pike, right? Finishing the item is very reasonable as the bonus attacks when you Pike them is good too. The stats are nice as well, right? And from there, he bought a Lincolns for the Legion and eventually completed his build with a Hex, right? Coming out of the Shadow Blade, you just Hex anyone and you can explode them with a couple of auto attacks. So it definitely makes sense as the game progresses. And you'll even see uh, the enemy team is done here, but with a couple of auto attacks, he just annihilates people. Does get dueled up here and yeah, you have to be careful, right? If people duel you, you can die. Fortunately, as I said, the Sven is kind of given up here. He's not really playing the game. The enemy team definitely forfeited at this point. But yeah, Marta is just kind of a better drow right now. I think Marta is a bit of a better laner in a lot of scenarios. I think Marta farms ancients a little bit faster, and I think Marta hits an overall harder timing that's very hard to deal with. But alright, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one, and I'm out. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.